Welcome Clarity Coders. Today we have a little more advanced tutorial. We're going to teach you how to create a graphical user interface for your Python program. So we're going to get your programs out of command prompt and working in a little application window. And we're going to do that with PyQt5. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. If you want to do this tutorial, you have to have Python and you have to have it installed on your path. So you have to be able to type in some type of command prompt. So if you bring up command prompt in Windows by typing CMD into your search, or if you have Git or Bash or something like that. So when you run Python, it should give you a Python command window. Or if you type Python dash dash version, it should give you back a version, which you also need greater than 3.5, I think at least. And you should also be able to type pip and get your pip commands back. If both those work, you can go ahead and skip to this time and continue on with the video there. If that didn't work, I want you to follow me and we're gonna install the latest version of Python. So I'm gonna do that by going to python.org. I'm gonna click this download button and I'm gonna grab the latest version. I'm gonna go ahead and grab 3.8 here for Windows. Now that we have that downloaded, we can go ahead and run that exe. You'll see here that I have some choices. We're gonna make a change here on this first window. So I don't want it to install to this directory and app data, local programs, and I would like to add it to the path as well, which we're going to use for this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and check add it to the path, and I'm also gonna customize my installation. I'm gonna leave all these, and we especially wanna make sure we're leaving pip, and I'm gonna change where it installs here. I'm going to just install it on my C drive. You can install it wherever you want, and I'll show you how you can find this location later if you forget, and I'm gonna go ahead and click install. And once you get to this screen, you should be all set up. Now, if you already had a terminal window open, you're going to need to close that terminal first before you're able to reference Python on the path. So go ahead and close out of any windows you have open, and we'll reopen them. Awesome, now we should all be on the same page now. So I want everyone to open up a fresh terminal. I'm just gonna use command prompt since it's built into Windows here. And now again, you should be able to type Python dash dash version and get your result back and also pip. And we're gonna go ahead and install the packages that we need. First is PyQt5 itself. So we're gonna do pip install PyQt5 and let that run. Now that that's finished, let's go ahead and install PyQt5 tools as well. This is gonna give us a nice designer that we can use to design our interfaces. So I'm gonna do pip install PyQt5 dash tools. And we're gonna let that run as well. Awesome, now once this is finished, we're gonna go find our designer. So in case you don't know where your Python installation is installed, let's go and create a Python window here. So I'm just gonna type Python and then I'm gonna import site. And then from here, I can do print parentheses site.get site packages. And it's a function, so we have to run it with parentheses afterwards. I'll try that again. And you can see that gives me back where my installation of Python is and where my site packages are. Now I wanna to navigate to the second location here to find the designer we're looking for. So wherever it says there, I want you to navigate to that location in a file explorer. So mine was on C drive, Python 3.8 here, lib, and then site packages. Now inside here, you'll see a folder for pyqt5 underscore tools. Now this recently changed, I think it used to be pyqt5 dash tools. So if you can't find this folder or it's changed in a future release, you can search up here for designer exe, designer.exe, and it should find the file we're looking for. But assuming you have this folder, you can double click on pyqt5 underscore tools, you're going to go to QT, then bin, and then there should be a designer exe here. Now, if you don't want to go through this hassle of finding this next time, you can right click it and create a shortcut or pin it to the taskbar, whatever you would like to do. I'm going to create a shortcut. You see, I got a shortcut here and I'll just move that to the desktop. Now we're ready to roll. Now I'm going to do this example in a folder here called GUI. So that's where I'm gonna store all my files and that is kind of important here. And if you wanna get out of this Python window here on Windows, I can push Control Z, hit Enter, and you can see I got back. You can also close out of this terminal and reopen it. 
Awesome, we should be ready to start designing our first interface. So let's open up designer.exe now, and you should get a window like this. Now, this is our first one, so we're just gonna create a main window. So go ahead and select main window. This is gonna give us an application window. Hit create, and you'll see here we have our main window. Now you can resize this or do whatever you would like with it. We're just gonna create a simple example here. So you can see you have all your buttons and your items on the side. We're gonna go through more in-depth examples in later videos. For right now, I am just going to create a little program that greets us. So I'm gonna create a label, a button, and I'm just dragging and dropping here, and a little entry box. We'll use this line edit. So we're gonna enter our name here, we're gonna push the button to greet, and then it's gonna show up and say something like, hi Jake. So I can double click this and change the text. I'm just gonna say, greet me. And I'll just start this at enter your name. And you can see here it cut it off because it's not big enough. We can widen this box a little bit and we should be good to go. Now, one thing I wanna point out when you click on this label, it'll give you some properties over here. This first one is the name that's actually gonna show up in our program. So you can change that to be anything you want or you can leave it the same, but I'm gonna call mine label one. I'm gonna call this my entry one. And this I'll just call button one for right now. Awesome, now this is gonna create a UI file. So I'm gonna go file, save as, and I'm gonna save it in that GUI directory that I showed you earlier. So I'm gonna put it inside this GUI directory. And you can leave it, you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call mine GUI.UI. Now we can minimize this. And you'll see in this folder now, I do have my UI file. Now, a little trick if you're on Windows, you can navigate here in Terminal. We're gonna need to be back in Terminal. I'm just gonna click in here. I'm inside this folder. I'm gonna type CMD, and you'll see it opens up a command prompt that's in this directory. So you need to be in the same directory as your GUI.UI or whatever you name this file. And now we're gonna use that to generate our Python script. So it's gonna generate that exact application that we had for us. And to do that, I'm gonna run the command pi uic 5 x now this, I'm going to point to the location of that UI file. Now remember, I'm in the same directory, so I can just do GUI.UI, and then I'm gonna give what I want my output file to be. So I'm gonna do dash O, and then I'll just call it example.py. Hit enter, and you'll see it's created an example.py file for us. Now I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio Code. You can open it up in any text editor you want. It doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go file, open, I'm gonna to navigate to that folder and open up that example.py we created. Now you'll see here once you get it open that it's created a lot of generic setup for you and that was setting up our application to look like what we designed inside the designer.exe. And you'll notice we do have our buttons and our labels here. You can see label one, button one, entry one. So I can run this inside of Visual Studio Code, but if you can't and don't have that experience yet, you can always run it with Python space. Now make sure you're in the same directory and you can call that script, whatever the script name was. So mine was example.py and you'll see we get the pop-up of our application. Now, of course, it doesn't do anything right now. We don't have it hooked up, but you can see we got the application running. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And now we'll do a really quick setup here to see if we can get our program at least running the way we thought. So you can see here that it creates a class for this window. So inside this class, let's create our own function called greet me. And if you're not familiar with classes, I have a video that you can check out here that explains them a little more. If you are, you'll know to access the instance variables, we have to pass in self. So I'm gonna pass in self, and that's so we can reach our buttons and our labels and all that good stuff inside of our program. So inside here, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm just going to print out testing, and this should show up in our command prompt when we click the button. We're gonna hook up our button we called button one to run this function so it prints out testing to the command prompt. So I'm gonna use self and then whatever our button name was, in this case our button was button one, and I'm going to run dot clicked. So this is gonna say whenever the button is clicked, I want you to run this function. And then I'm gonna do dot connect and I'm gonna pass in my function which was self dot greet me. And if I run this, you'll see that we get our window, and if I push our button, you can see I get testing down here in my command prompt. 
So let's make it do a, something a little more useful. Let's create a nice greeting. We're going to say that is equal to, I'm going to use F strings here. So I'm going to say hi, and then I'm going to use curly brackets so I can use a variable. And inside here, I'm going to do self dot, and I'm going to grab whatever was in our entry box. So we call that entry one, and I'm going to do dot text to get out whatever's inside of it. So it should take whatever's in our entry box and put it inside hi, and then we'll add an exclamation point and say, welcome to my silly program. And now we got to show that somewhere right now. It wouldn't show up anywhere. So I'm going to do self dot. And now I'm going to use our label and overwrite what was in there. We called that label one. I'm going to do dot set text. And I'm going to pass in our variable from above that we created. Nice greeting. And that should be it. So now again, you can run it from terminal. If that's your only option, I'm going to run it up here above. And you can see it says enter your name. If I don't enter anything and push greet me, it just pulls in that blank space there and it says hi blank. Welcome to my, and you can see it cut off the rest of it there. So if I put in Jake, it says hi Jake, welcome. And you can see it's cutting off because that label box isn't wide enough. So we can actually edit our interface up above. So if we look, here's our label box. You can see up above it has four coordinates. Now these are the X and Y location of the label, the width and the height. So I want it to be a little wider. So I'm gonna change it to 200 just to make sure it's big enough. I'm gonna run this again. Now put in Jake again. And you can see now it fits our whole line. And that's as simple as it is. Now one warning here before we sign off on this one, you wanna make sure that you don't run that command to regenerate your file again. Don't do this, but if we ran that exact same line again to create our graphical user interface, if we did pi uic 5 x, we did GUI, dot ui we wanted to output example dot pi again exactly the same this is going to overwrite our file so if we did that and we go back to our program you'll notice it's destroyed everything we did so you don't want to do that you'll see now our button doesn't do anything we've overwritten this file now i can get that back pretty quickly by doing a little control z I just wanted to warn you guys about that. So if you want to regenerate your UI file, you want to make sure you don't overwrite your example. You could call it example2.py and then kind of paste them together. That's all for right now. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And in our next video, we'll try and continue this PyQt5 example with a more in-depth program and show you how to really create a cool interface. Until next time, keep coding.